Good morning. This weekend, and especially tomorrow, we celebrate the birthday of our country. We celebrate this July 4th and our Independence Day. Many will gather around the grill tomorrow, and then the great debate will begin. Which condiment is the right one for a hot dog? Are you on team ketchup or team mustard? But in all seriousness, as we celebrate this holiday, we celebrate the freedoms that we enjoy in our country. And I think as we celebrate our freedoms in the country, we also recognize the great freedoms we have within our faith. That God has given us the great freedom of free will. But with that comes certain expectations. And so too with freedom in our country comes a certain expectations, and I like to call them responsibilities. Because with great freedom comes great responsibility. In our country that means when we have the freedom to vote, that we have a responsibility to educate ourselves on what we're voting on. When we have the freedom of speech, it means we have a responsibility to carefully select our words so that we tell the truth, that we uplift others, and that we don't offend others. Our right to bear arms also means that we must be responsible with how we use those, with how we put it away, how we protect ourselves, how we protect others from those. Each one of our rights comes with responsibilities. Our freedom to have sexual relationships also comes with a responsibility to do it in a loving relationship with it, the openness to life. These are things that our church teaches us, that with freedom comes great responsibility. Our readings today talk about some of our responsibilities that we have within our faith. In our gospel, Jesus tells us that we have a responsibility to go out to others and to preach the good news and to share the good news that he has given to us. But when he does that, and he sends out the 72 and he sends them out to let others know he's coming. He tells them to start their conversation with peace to this household. And what a reminder to us that as we bring Christ to others, our first mission is to be missionaries of peace, to be peacemakers. And what a challenge that can be for us especially in our challenging days that we have right now and all the debates that are going on around our country, that we are to be the peacemakers amongst others. Maybe that means we put both ketchup and mustard on our hot dog. That's what I do. Father Bob's disgusted by that. But. <laughs> to be peacemakers. And how do we be peacemakers? Well, I think that comes from our first two readings. Our first reading invites us to be nourished by the Lord. It says that we should come to him, to come to Jerusalem and be nourished. I think about how are we nourished by the Lord? He nourishes us here at his table in his Eucharist, and that is the most profound way that God nourishes us. But he also nourishes us in his scriptures. He nourishes us in our prayer when we pray and we talk to him and listen to him. Our God is there like a loving father or a loving mother waiting for us to come to him and be nourished. Our first reading really talks about God almost as a mother, where it says we should come and enjoy the milk through his breast. 
what a powerful image of who our God is and how we are to come to him. I think about all the ways that we are nourished throughout our day, all the noise that we are hit with from social media, from television, from radio, from the people we surround ourselves with. How much of that nourishes us in the Lord? With freedom comes responsibility. And I think of our own responsibility to choose the people that we listen to, to choose the things that we read, to choose who we will be nourished by, to choose the amount of time we spend with the Lord being nourished by him. This week there's the challenge from God that says, how will you allow me to nourish you? And how will you silence those other voices? For truly are to be the peacemakers. We truly are to be those people that bring Christ to others. We must first allow Christ into us. And when we do that and we bring Christ to others, Paul reminds us, as does Jesus in the gospel, Paul reminds us that we should only boast that we have Christ on the cross. We shall only boast of our salvation, not of our own doing. Our salvation comes because Jesus died on the cross. Jesus tells the 72, you've done great things. You've gone out and spread good news. You've been able to send demons out of people. But you only did that because of me. Don't rejoice and celebrate because you did great things. Rejoice in the true happiness that you'll be in heaven one day. When we nourish ourselves in the Lord, when we bring the Lord to others and let others see Christ in us, then God promises us great prosperity. Prosperity in this life and prosperity in the next. Let us celebrate that prosperity by letting Christ be seen through us, rejoicing only in Christ. Being those people that live the prayer of St. Francis, where we bring forgiveness to those who need it, where we bring pardon to those who've been injured, where we are true instruments of Christ because we've allowed God to nourish us to be his hands and his feet and his peacemakers. As were the 72, we are called to bring Christ to others. We pray that this week we may accept that responsibility and freely choose to be God's 72. Amen.